Go ahead. Uh, my name is Patricia Robertson. Um, I'm a relatively new constituent here in Winnipeg South. I'm a writer. I came to Winnipeg to be right in residence at the Winnipeg Public Library and I decided to stay. Um, and I moved here from the Yukon, where climate change is increasing at twice the rate of the rest of Canada. I can't believe that the Liberal government, given the lip service you have paid to climate change, is contemplating building pipelines. We know this has to be kept in the ground. It's not good enough to invest in green technology. It's not good enough to talk about the narrative of prosperity. We need a new, as a writer, we need a new narrative about the planet and about Canada. My Canada is a world leader in, in not only investing in green technology, but in a managed decline of fossil fuel resources. And that includes We've got Bill McKibben writing in the National Observer. We've got Andrew Nikiforuk in the tie.ca. You know, they're, they're people in, incredibly knowledgeable. Andrew Nikiforuk has had years of research into this. You know, we can't, Mr. Trudeau can't charm his way around the climate science math. You know, it's not gonna work. So the message from Canadians is, we want a livable planet for our children and we want the Liberal government to actually listen and actually act. Thank you. Here, here. service they, they have been doing on the climate, but I cannot reconcile it with uh, the LNG approval on the West Coast. I'm hoping that it's a cynical maneuver to say, and really, they don't really believe that the LNG project will go through because there's no market for it. But the fact is that <laughs> the only reason that to, uh, to provide new pipelines in Canada is for the expansion of the tar sands. And so you cannot reconcile the expansion of the tar sands and the uh, shale gas and oil uh, with a climate, even a climate stasis. Climate change is happening, we all know it, you'll see it. No one's arguing about that, no one here is arguing about that. But you, <laughs> I'm hoping that um, there's a lot of cynicism by the government that you actually don't believe this will stuff will get to get done because you have a political constituency, different political constituencies that some say you have to have sell this stuff, others say that you can't have it coming out of the ground even. But I would like to know what the liberals are doing on a consistent basis to actually change the basis of the economy from a fossil fuel based economy to something else, because I don't see a lot of it happening, not on a grand scale anywhere. You see it even more, you can see more solar development in Saudi Arabia than you do in Manitoba, or in, uh, in Canada, in the United States. So uh, what I'd like to see is, on an industrial economy-wide basis, what the liberal, liberals have, what the government has in mind. Well, I discussions on climate change and on energy development from coast to coast in Canada with indigenous leaders, industry leaders, and environmentalists all sitting around the table talking about common objectives. 
and it's remarkable what can be accomplished when people have open ears and open minds and consensus can be reached. There will never be unanimity on these projects. There is a certain number of people who don't want any development at any time for whatever reason. But it's not true. There are people, well, you're one of them, aren't you? You want to, you we, want any we, oil and we, gas? We're talking about green technology. We're talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about oil. It's not, we're talking it's about not, fossil fuels. It's not fossil fuels. fuels. <laughs> it says it yeah. needs to be left in the so, ground. Yeah, that's right. So uh, there are people who say it needs to be left in the ground. Don't paint us as anti-development. Well, people aren't Muslim. No, 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 we're not anti-development. That's, that's, that's a lie. Absolutely true. You put those words in her mouth. Yep. She didn't say any of that. I'm saying that there are people, and I wasn't referring to it no, I know you are, but you are painting, you are painting a large number of Canadians with, I would have a large number of Canadians with that label. So, so, so I, I'm not, uh, either by nature or in my one year experience in the cabinet of Canada, cynical in the least. That's number one, and I'm sorry that people are viewing us in cynical when we have been as open and as transparent in our decisions as any government in my memory, and I've, I've been around a long time. There is going to be a transition from the fossil fuel economy <coughs> to renewable energy, and I want Canada to be a leader in that transition. Yeah, here, here. Here, here. I'm also disappointed that you're using an expression like lip service, which doesn't do service to the billions of dollars that we have invested and that we have planned to spend with the provinces, with the municipalities, on green infrastructure, on green transportation, on renewable sources of energy. Because it doesn't it matter if you don't shut off the pipe. So <laughs> more than lip service, and I would invite you to uh, spend some time with my staff, if you'd like, to go through the budget of 2016, to go through the actual expenditures, even in my department, Natural Resources Canada, and I hope that we can prove to you that there's plenty of action. Not that words don't matter, of course they do, but it's more than lip service. Okay, moving on.